Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Palm Sunday service. I hope you're all here in time. It's lovely to see you. Uh, just to mention, as we start our service, that you should have received by email an order of service if you want to follow it. Um, please do join us in our songs and in those parts in bold. That would be lovely if you can do that. Um, you should also have uh, a Palm Cross with you, either from previous years like this one, um, or perhaps you've been onto the uh, website and downloaded the instructions and you've made your own. So we will be saying a blessing for all the Palm Crosses later on in our service. So as I say, we're going to begin in a few moments as we sing our songs. Please do join in. You really do not want to hear me singing and it will be much better if you do that. So as we begin, let's just quieten our hearts. God of times and seasons, who gives and sustains all life, we gather in your name and seek your blessing on our community. May we celebrate and sing of the knowledge of your love. May we offer ourselves to you in joy and thanksgiving. May we share with one another the blessings of your goodness. Amen. Amen. And so as you call us to worship, lift up our voices to sing your praise. Lift up our hearts in joyful worship. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to behold your glory. For you are our promised King, the God of our salvation. Amen. So we're now going to sing our first hymn, uh, Ten Thousand Reasons. Bless the Lord, 
my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never. good to sing our Lord's praise. And so let us come to confess our sins to our God. For the gospel calls us to turn away from sin and to be faithful to Christ as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith. So we renew our confidence and our trust in his mercy. Shall we pray together? Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and raised me up to newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm now just going to give our first reading, which is from Psalm 118, and I'm reading from verses 18 to 29. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Well, I just want to say a few words on that, if I may. And just to mention that at this time, uh, the disciples and all the crowds, thousands of people, would have been making their way up to Jerusalem for the Passover. 
it was a time of pilgrimage, an annual pilgrimage, and this would have been, for many, the last day of their pilgrimage. They would have set off early in the morning and they would be making their way up to Jerusalem. And like many of us going out on a walk, it would have started off with perhaps a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm. And then as they were walking along, they would have gathered, started to gather into little groups, little clusters of people walking along, some perhaps chatting quietly, some others perhaps just prayerfully reflecting on what they were doing as they were making their way up to Jerusalem. And it was probably during about this time of quiet reflection that Jesus quietly said to two of his disciples, go off to the nearby village of Bethphage and bring me back a donkey and its colt. And so they went off and everyone carried on as they were making their way up to Jerusalem. And then they would have seen the disciples return and they would have seen them lay their cloaks upon the donkey and then Jesus getting on top of the donkey and riding on into Jerusalem. And as they witnessed that, there would have been a ripple of excitement going through the crowds and they would have started to cluster around Jesus because they all knew the prophecy of Zechariah. Behold, your king will come riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And they would have recognised this as being a very significant moment as the time when well, Jesus has finally declared who he is. Up to now, he has raised Lazarus from the dead. He has opened the eyes of the blind. He has cured the lame. He has done the most amazing miracles. But he will not say who he is. And now, in the most public way possible, he has directed them to this prophecy. And he has said, I am the king. And I am now coming to ride into Jerusalem and establish my kingdom of peace. And you can say the people finally gathering around, this is a day like no other day. And so they will be taking off their cloaks and laying them before the donkey as he walks along, before Jesus. And then for those who didn't have coats to put on, they would have started gathering palm branches and dragging them across the roadside to lay before him or to wave before him. I've just got a couple of similar ones here. They're not quite that big. Perhaps a young child would have taken these and waved them before the Lord. But as many of you will ch with children will know, children would have grabbed the largest possible ones they could barely hold and would have dragged them across the road in all the excitement and enthusiasm to worship the one who has come to be king. Now, as I say, in a few moments, uh, we'll be blessing our palm crosses. And I want us to think of all that's going to be happening uh, on this Palm Sunday, on that Palm Sunday. just want to draw your attention to this psalm, this song, which they would have begun to sing as they went up uh, into Jerusalem. Open for me. Remember, the king is now with them. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. The Lord has done it this very day, so let us rejoice. Lord, Hosanna, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the procession. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. It's the most amazing song of praise, song of excitement of what God is wanting us to do. And I know that at the moment we're in our homes, but the time will come when we will be able to go up the path into our churches again. And wouldn't it be wonderful to say that psalm, that song of praise, as we go in again to worship our Lord, who has become our salvation, who brings us his peace. And so in lieu of that, as a reminder of the day when we will gather together again and make our way into our churches, I want us to take our palm crosses 
and later on after the service to place them either in your window or perhaps attach them to your front doors as a sign to everyone. This is the God whom we worship. This is the King who is coming and we are going to be ready to welcome him, to rejoice in him and to follow him wherever he may lead us. So please do take your palm cross if you have it with you and I'm just going to say the prayer. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now Judith is going to read our second reading from Matthew 21. So I'm reading from Matthew 21, starting to read at verse 1. <clears throat> As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large cloud, crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just going to say a few words. Heavenly Father, draw near us now. May we hear your word to us, we pray. Amen. As Jesus entered the town, entered the city, there was uproar. Who is this self-proclaimed king? What is going on? Who is it that we should worship him? And the crowds answered the people in the city. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. But that wasn't a very particularly noble title. Um, you may remember that when Philip came to Nathanael early on in Jesus's ministry and introduced uh, Jesus to him, uh, Nathanael's response was, Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And that was the received wisdom in Jerusalem, that Galilee, Nazareth was a backwater, a northern backwater that nobody took any notice of and nothing good ever came from it. So we have enough kings. We have Caesar. We have the Herods. They're all despots. Why do we need another king, let alone a self-proclaimed king who comes from Nazareth? It's a view that many have today. Who is Jesus that we should listen to him? Why should we proclaim him king above anyone else? Well, as we saw last week, uh, Jesus is the son of God, the one by whom and for whom all creation came into being. He is the one who holds our lives in the palm of his hand. He is the one before whom we must give an account of our lives at the end of time. He is the one also, the king who comes among us and who walks with us. And he is the God 
who comes to establish peace. If there was no other reason for us to listen to him, surely it should be for that reason. He is coming to establish peace. Because isn't that what we all want? We all want to raise our families, our children, in a society where there is peace, where there is respect, where there is security and safety. And Jesus says, that is what I am coming to bring. Isn't he a king we should listen to? You know, sometimes we are so prejudiced. We, we form our impressions of people without listening to what they have to say. We're all guilty of it. But surely, if this is our God, if he is who he say, says he is, we should at least listen to him. And you know, he came to bring peace, but he did not come peaceably. Um, sometimes if there is things going on in the workplace, perhaps there is an argument between the trade unions and the managers, um, they call in an administrator, a, a mediator, someone who can bring peace to that situation. But often when they come, they first have to knock a few heads together. They first have to expose all the bad practice before they can start to build a culture of peace, a culture where people respect and value one another. And so it shouldn't surprise us that as Jesus comes into Jerusalem, he goes into the temple and he immediately begins to turn over the tables of the money changers. And he says, my house is to be a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. You're making it a den of robbers. You're destroying everything. You're messing things up. And you know, we look at our world at this time. Across the world, essentially, globally, financially, we are in lockdown. We are being told across the world to stay in our homes. For the first time for hundreds of years, where our world is enjoying its Sabbaths, pollution is falling. We are beginning to reflect and to reevaluate our lives. What is the most important thing to us? What are the things that we take for granted? And I think we're beginning to see its relationships. Those are the things that we've taken for granted. And when we can't meet our families, when we can't give them a hug, when we have to stand outside our, our care homes and wave to our loved ones, who we just want to take up in our arms, who we just want to sit beside, it's heartbreaking. We say, what have we done to ourselves that we are in this situation? What are we doing to our world? Sometimes we have to have things taken from us for us to realise how precious they are. And our Lord has turned our world upside down. And he's saying, listen. Listen. Get rid of the false idols. Get rid of the things that you feel are important, that are driving you to live a life that actually perhaps you don't really want to live. I've come, he says, to bring peace. I have come to reconcile you. I have come to build relationship. Will you not listen? Will you not repent, ask forgiveness and come to me that I might heal you? You know, at the end of uh, Isaiah's prophecy in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, just after he speaks of the donkey and the, the king coming into Jerusalem, he says, ask the Lord for rain in the springtime. In other words, when you see the buds starting to begin, it's when you see life starting to flourish, pray for rain. Because Seek the blessing that comes to nurture that life and to make it spring up and come forth even more abundantly. 
And so, yes, we are in a time of great distress. But is it a time as well when we're responding to the voice of the Lord, when he is coming amongst us and he is urging us, now is the time to turn around. Now is the time for new life. Now is the time to pray for blessing. Because I'm coming and it is springtime. Let us give our lives to him at this time. Let us acknowledge our weaknesses and our failures. Let us acknowledge what is most important to us. The people who are most important to us. And let us invest. Let us pledge. Let us commit ourselves to following him. For in him is peace and life and hope. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, who alone is worthy, who alone has redeemed all creation by the shedding of your precious blood, you alone give and sustain all life by your word. You alone raise up the weak and give hope to the despairing. You alone behold our suffering and carry our tears in the palm of your hand. Look upon us in our great need and have mercy. Forgive us and draw us back to yourself. Heal us that we may live again and restore us that we, we may rejoice in you. For you alone are our King and Saviour. Amen. Amen. And our collect for today, almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the response to Lord in your mercy is here our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for all our doctors and nurses who are fighting on the front line against coronavirus. We pray for their protection and well-being, for your power to sustain them and your love to enfold them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the many workers and volunteers in our emergency and essential services, our businesses and government agencies. We pray for endurance and encouragement as they work to protect us and provide for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for ourselves, for situations where our faith burns dim, and our strength grows weak, where our hopes are dashed and our hearts are broken. We bring all to our Lord in the silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our churches, our homes and our neighbourhoods that God's love may be known in the care we show to one another through acts of kindness and thoughtful deeds. We bring to the Lord the situations and the concerns that we have for those we cherish. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray for all who are alone, who suffer pain or distress, who are fearful of days to come and are unsure of where to turn. Lord, we entrust them to your faithful love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we draw our prayers together in our Lord's Prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to draw our service to a close by singing In Christ Alone. And uh, one of our young people is going to be playing this on the violin. So that's wonderful that she's accompanying us. So let us sing this together. You may want to stand if you're at home. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love. Righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. So may the God who gives endurance and encouragement 
grant us a spirit of unity and solidarity. Amen. Amen. May the God who loves us as his children grant us grace to serve one another with fervour and zeal. Amen. Amen. And so may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him, that our lives may overflow with hope by the power of God's Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. And I thank you all for joining us this day. May you have a blessed Palm Sunday.